everyone. This is Floodlight Artist coming back with you. And today I'm going to be working on another commission piece for a client. Um, I had five commission pieces that were requested and four of those are steampunk. And I actually have a sketchbook that I draw in not daily, but several times a week. And this, it happens to be one of the sketches that I did in my book. So I made a copy of this. My client really liked it. I actually wanted to buy my sketchbook, but I wouldn't sell my sketchbook because that's my personal um, concepts that I, that I go back later and, and see about doing paintings and stuff with. So this was one of the sketches that he really liked. And of course, I made my distance on my paper just a little bit larger because I wanted this even border around it. But so I'm going to go in today and start this video with showing you the basic rough drawing. I won't say the basic rough drawing. I penciled it out, but I'm just going to go in and start drawing it in with my pen. And that pen's not working so great. I'm going to go to my next one. I may be getting low on ink on that one. And on this picture there's, um, and I don't know why I did it. I just thought it would be a cool thing to do. But I have what looks like almost like paper, lined paper, almost like a notebook or something. And then I, I have these, what I call like rusty panels. I'm fascinated with rusty panels. And of course little rivets. And I like this, I guess it's like where water maybe has run and it looks like a drippy, rusty, drippy edge coming down. Always got to be an, a surprise element. This is these little drips. This one's even running over top of my uh, steampunk bird that I'm going to be drawing in here in a second. This is like unexpected here. These little drips. I just like to add something that's maybe somebody wouldn't expect to see. Something off the wall. Something to give it character. I'm going to try to make this sketch a little bit quicker than the last one. The last um, drawing that I did was in three parts. And it was a, um, a man with a, holding a monocle over his eye. It was like a steampunk. He had a steampunk uh, top hat on, you know, a vest. And he had a little mechanical bee sitting on his shoulder. That was also one of the commission pieces that I was doing. But um, this is going to be the second one that I'm working on. And each one of the pieces are going to be black and white and grayscale per client's request. And we decided to take one small element in each picture and color it in, kind of like the... I don't know if you've ever seen the photographs of, there's a lady that does photos, I can't remember her name, and she does black and white photos of children, and she always takes one element like a, maybe a flower or something that the child is wearing or something, and they always 
she always adds color to just, just one element. Well, that's kind of what we're going to do with these drawings. Is we're just going to add one element of color. Something that your eye will be drawn to. Just, just to spice it up a little bit. Some little feathers here, some little wings. And of course, the way I drew this bird, it's it looks like um, these are metal panels with rivets. Nuts and bolts. Then on the back of the neck here, I've got little scallops I'm drawing in, almost like a um, a not a cord, but a, a pipe that has like these ripples, I guess, in it, and they're kind of embedded down in the neck here. Another panel here. Just some more rivets. And then I drew in this little metal panel with open grid here. And it's going to look like it's um, almost like a, a vent grate where it's open on the inside. You can see underneath it. I'll start putting in the. I actually did the the body of the bird's face. It's actually a clock. I thought it was a cool idea. I I don't have a clue where that concept came out of my head one day when I was drawing in my sketchbook, but. It ended up being one of my favorite drawings in my sketchbook. And of course these are Roman numerals. I like the Roman numerals on clocks. They're pretty cool looking. And I apologize if I get quiet. Sometimes I get to concentrate and, and oh, uh, I forget you're here. But to get off of me, um, I would love to find out information about you and if you're an artist and you like to watch other artists on YouTube, which I love to do, I would love to for you to to talk to me, to comment, tell me all about yourself, what medium you like to use, uh, do you like watercolors, do you like 
Um, I don't know why that didn't get drawn in. Do you like watercolors? Do you like acrylics? Oils? Charcoal? Oh, there's so many different mediums. Collage? I'm actually working on some collage pieces in my studio. I had to put them on hold to do these commission pieces, but I started working on them a couple days ago and I've got backgrounds done on them. And I don't usually do several at a time, but I just wanted to take some old wooden boards and convert them into art pieces. And I just went to town and did some background paint finishes on them in different colors. But for me, I like to work with different mediums. I'm not per se all inclusive on one type of medium. Not right yet anyway. I, I love all facets of art. And if I could be a sculptor I would probably be a sculptor. If I could be a woodworker, I would be a woodworker. I just, I just love doing it all. Um, I don't have a kiln. I don't have clay. But I actually went to a festival one year. And uh, there was a guy there that had a pottery wheel. And he allowed me to get on his pottery wheel and make a little pot. I never had it fired or colored or anything like that. I never put the glaze in on it and took it because the little place that he he owns a pottery studio in my town and they do classes and everything. And he told me, he was like, you would do really well with the pottery. And I, I think I would love doing it. But I have so many other things on my plate that I never went to take a class. But that might be something I eventually would like to do. I would actually, I like to get on YouTube and look at, um, I guess you call it DIYs, do it yourself, how to build things, how to make things. And I saw how to build a, um, a makeshift uh, pottery wheel with an old tire maybe, well, anyway. It's pretty cool. It seemed a little bit above my expertise as far as how to build, even with the tire. But my husband, my husband probably could figure it out. But but anyway, I was looking online one time and I saw this way where you can make a kiln, but it's underground. And it was so cool. It was like, I would so love to do that because the the um, type of pottery that you do underground is like, I think it's maybe called Raku. I'm not sure. It gives it a more natural look and not so much of a polished, glazed, colored it gives it more of a rustic, burnt umber, uh, a dry look to the pottery. But I really like that style. And if I ever do pottery in the future, that's I would do an underground kiln. They do it with like, they dig out a, I think it was like a two foot. Well, I, I guess you could make it however big you want. But you dig out a, a hole in your ground and you line the inside of the hole with bricks. And once the bricks are laid in there, you throw some sawdust in there and you lay your pieces of pottery down in between all the sawdust. And you can do it in layers. The one I saw, that's what they did. They layered it. And then you just add your pottery in there and you set it on fire, basically. And it, it it burns uh, and cooks, or I guess you call it cooks, uh, bakes that pottery. And uh, the look of the pottery is so cool. I think 
what I would have trouble with would be maybe not kneading the pottery enough and maybe finding that I would have cracks in my pottery because I didn't knead it enough or work with the, the clay enough beforehand. I think that would probably be, if I struggled with anything with the pottery, it wouldn't be on the wheel, I don't think. I think it would be more of the kneading process and maybe not getting it uh, prepared proper, properly just because I, I don't. That's why I would need classes, to take classes to learn how to do that and patience but I think it would be neat to do that and I actually think sculpting would be pretty pretty cool as well but but in saying all that <laughs> you know, don't say I said all that to say this basically um, I love all forms of art and right now I'm focusing mostly on watercolor and pen and ink and I do acrylic I do large acrylic well I say large two feet and up is usually my acrylic pieces but I do acrylic resin and I love the effect those are usually abstract pieces they're usually not like realistic type paintings I have some that are like sceneries and stuff, but most of the acrylic resin are just really abstract because I love the the uh, the bold color that the resin gives it. it. Just brings those colors to life, and I feel liberated and free when I'm doing those pieces just because they are so. Uh, uninhibited I guess is the word I would use they're not they're not constricting I could just let the paint flow uh, now some of my abstracts actually look like a pour uh, if you know anything about pour painting they kind of have that feel but I don't do it like that I don't uh, my technique is different. I don't do the pour painting. And uh, but I've I've watched other people do that type of that type of painting. I think they're really cool. But that's not how I do mine. So I basically focus on pen and ink right now, watercolor and the acrylic resin those are my three main mediums that i use right now and i did a watercolor no, oh my goodness not watercolor i did an oil painting last summer i think it was first oil painting i had i had uh, tried my hand at in 20 something years so and I apologize for my birds in the background. I have two parakeets and they love to talk when I'm talking. And I honestly do not have anywhere else I can put them in the house because they kind of make a mess. And I have to constantly clean up. And in my studio I have like a linoleum floor. And I can just take my little vacuum cleaner and clean up after them. So... They're in an area of my house that I don't, well, I won't say I don't mind. I don't like the mess, but it, I don't, it's not like I want it around my kitchen counters or my den where I stay, where the family stays or whatever. I don't want my birds making a mess around that. So they stay in my studio. And I know you really wanted to hear that, didn't you? I just explained to you why my birds are present in the background and making lots of chattery noise. And I'm just rambling. Just rambling and talking to you. 
just because I can. And because it makes the time go by a lot faster when I talk. I used to go to the gym with my friend and we would spend two hours at the gym every day. Well, with the exception of Sundays, that sometimes I would not go on Sundays. Sometimes I would though. But we would go to the gym and we would be there two hours and we would be talking and chit chatting and the time would fly by. Like I didn't realize how fast it would go by until it was over. And I'm like, well that went by pretty quickly. The old saying, time flies by when you're having fun. I loved the gym. I got addicted to the gym. <laughs> and uh, I had to quit going for a while because of all my health problems. But I am, I just recently started back up going to the gym with my friend again. Well, I say we go, we don't go together, we meet up and we go to the same classes. And sometimes we'll work out side by side. She gets on one bicycle and I get on the other. She does the a bike where your legs out, are out in front of you. And then I do the bike where my legs are underneath me. I can't do the one with my legs out in front of me because it hurts my knees too bad. And the funny thing is, is she just had knee surgery and that one doesn't bother her for some reason. It bothers me. And I don't know why. Uh, treadmills bother me too for some reason. They just aggravate my lower back and my knees and even my feet sometimes. Cause I have, I'm not claiming it, okay, by no means, but that I guess what they call plantar fasciitis. My feet sometimes will hurt so bad at the end of the day. And I have to do stretches and stretch out the tendons and ligaments in the back of my leg to um, help with that. But the gym, the gym that I, I mean, uh, the gym that I'm going to, it's the same gym I, I went to several years ago where I was, like I said, addicted to it. I don't go for two hours anymore. I do go for about... 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, hour and a half. That's the most I've done. I've only started back about a month and a half ago. But I'm doing it because a lot of the exercises in the class that I go to is like the therapy that my doctor, my uh, neurosurgeon had me going and doing. A lot of the things that we're doing is close to what I was doing in therapy. So it really helps. Um, stretch out all of the muscles and the tendons and ligaments and stuff in my neck and my lower back and my legs. <laughs> I sound like I'm falling apart, don't I? I do have some issues, but I'm persevering through them and I'm a pretty strong, I, I think I'm a pretty strong person. I say that now, but I actually went through a really hard battle um, with my medical conditions and I, I got to a place where I got really weak not only physically but mentally when you deal with chronic pain or problems constantly you just you get tired of What's all saying? I'm tired of being tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, I got that way. And now, uh, I have one surgery behind me. Two more that they're saying I need. But one surgery is behind me. And I will tell you that one surgery has made a world of difference in my life. I still have a few little repercussions from it. Not from the surgery itself, but from damaged nerves in my uh, in the brain area. I have 
um, times when I eat that sometimes my uh, face will go numb or I lose a little bit of a sensation of what my food tastes like, that kind of thing. But that is slowly getting better and I knew it would take time. But I am so thankful that I don't have I had trigeminal neuralgia, in case you haven't watched any of my other videos and I've talked about it, but I dealt with it for eight years, and they thought it was my teeth, and it wasn't. It was my, the nerves in my head, the trigeminal nerve in my head was affecting uh, my lower jaw and upper jaw was where I was feeling a lot of my pain. So, but I don't have those pains anymore. I don't have the, what I call like electrical shocks that I was having before. I don't have those. And I'm so thankful and grateful for the knowledge that doctors have to correct something like what I had. It was just amazing at the difference that it made in my life. And I'm able to, no, I'm not able to do a whole lot with my back still, but I'm able to get in my studio and do my drawings and uh, get out and do more. Uh, it's just been wonderful. Really wonderful. Like I said, I'm so thankful. Anyway, I'm trying to finish up this little the outline part, and I'm drawing in this little uh, chain of the key where the bird is holding. did there but that didn't work. I had it drawn in funny. Oh well. Um, it is what it is. I don't know why. I, I don't know why it was drawn that way. I guess I drew it wrong. But anyway. I got really sidetracked just now, but when we was talking about the gym, I actually started about a month ago, and I'm actually doing really well with the gym. Uh, I started doing some exercises on the machines, and of course the class, which I joined the Silver Sneakers class for senior citizens. Laugh at me if you want, but I did that because I had to start somewhere. And for me, uh, this was a good place to start to get, they do a lot of yoga and it was a good, and uh, actually I, when I was on all the medication I was on, I had a lot of trouble with my balance. I had lost a lot of balance. I had a lot of vertigo. And so the yoga classes have been great for my balance and I sleep good at night. I won't say I sleep good. I sleep better at night. That's a more the. I still toss and turn, but I don't have. Um, I used to be where I couldn't go to sleep at night for hours. I'm not quite that bad anymore. Just from exercising. Exercising does a world of difference. And if you don't, if you're not a an avid ex, 
you don't exercise often, I would suggest that you start because it is so helpful. Okay, now going back to my reference picture, I'm going to start putting in some of this shading done with the pen and this little um, design. Let's start doing this detail work now. And this is where the process may slow down a little bit with the details. Hopefully not too bad. And on my original sketch I had a lot of color on it. And that was what we originally talked about doing with the client. But I think since we're wanting to make all the four pictures, the four steampunk pictures look similar or cohesive, I may just pull one element out on this picture like I did, like I'm going to do on the others, to color in and not do the whole bird in color. But it's really neat because my client actually liked this picture well enough to want to maybe do a tattoo with it. So, and hopefully you'll get it done in color. It would look so cool with the color. The, the browns, the golds, the burnt umber colors are really reminiscent of steampunk. These brown tones. If you look at some of the costumes and stuff, that's usually the tones and the colors. You don't use, well now you'll see like some of the women with the Victorian dresses and stuff. You'll see them wearing, you know, the deeper, richer colors like purples and blues and burgundies and. But for the most part, like the men's attire, the leather satchels, the belt buckles, the gears, most of that's all in these brown tones. There's that. Now, on my previous sketch, the, le the uh, numbers on the clock are black, as well as the hands. So I'm going to go in and start filling in that color. I think I might get my, I'm going to get a bigger pen for this. I'm going to use a 08, just because it has a thicker nib on it. And it will go quicker. I was talking with a uh, 
basically a future collector of my work the other day. And she was asking me if I'd ever been to the Dragon Con, I think it is, in Georgia. She was like, you should so set your booth up down there and do these steampunk drawings. I've never been. I've never been to a Comic Con or Dragon Con or any of those, but I would so love to go. Just to see everybody dressed up and all the steampunk, sci-fi characters. Now, I'm not a big Star Wars fan like my husband and my son. They really like all the Star Wars movies and Star Trek. Now, I watched Star Trek with my husband when we first, earlier on in our marriage. We would sit down every night and we would watch Star Trek. And I can get into Star Trek a little bit easier than I can Star Wars. I, I just don't, I don't follow the plot maybe as good as I should. And I'm constantly having to ask questions. They're like, would you please shut up? <laughs> Cause we can't we can't hear the movie and we we don't we don't want to have to sit and answer your questions all through the movie. Cause I'm like, what does that mean? And who are they? And <laughs> and they get they get annoyed with me. But I actually love the costumes in in these Star Trek and Star Wars and these shows like this. Um, and I actually love to watch the show uh, Face Off. If you haven't seen Face Off, it's it's on I think the Sci-Fi Channel, and it's basically people making uh, cosplay clothing and attire, and they may have a challenge to say do a. Uh, like a captain of a ship or something and it's got to be set in a era of they're in space or something I don't know I'm just giving you a little scenario and they have to create a whole person's costume and makeup and everything to depict that and it's so cool I love to watch that one and um it goes along with kind of my quirky weird self I guess but I like stuff like that I like to watch the rap game <laughs> with the kids who are striving to be rap artists I like to watch of course HGTV because I love interior design and uh, I don't know if I've I probably told you in other videos, but me and my husband flip houses, and part of the the part that I love is I like the tearing out. Well, I can't do it anymore because of my health. But um, but my favorite part is going in and picking out all the different design features. You know, the tile, the hardwoods, the paint colors, and I I used to be a full time house painter. Um, I actually went in and would consult with clients and we would pick out paint colors. I'd go in and I'd paint whole houses by myself. Unless it got into something that was like a 14 foot ceiling. Then of course I had to have my husband to help me with some of those because even... I'm totally terrified of heights, okay? but And, and I would get on these ladders to do like up high, but when it comes to say a 14 foot ceiling over a kitchen cabinet I would have a hard time reaching over the cabinet that high up so with those jobs he would come and help me but most of my jobs didn't require that extensive height or reach so I did that for quite a few years and actually last year I got so busy with house painting that I was having one house after the other. I would go in and take me about seven days to paint about a 2,000 square foot house because I was doing it by myself. And I didn't hire a crew because I wanted to make the money. I wanted to be the one. And two, I don't trust other people's work sometimes, maybe like I should. 
and I'm a, I'm a painter that does not tape off anything I've cut in. So I was doing that full time and I would go in and sometimes paint murals for people. So jack of all trades, master of none. That's who I am. <laughs> I'm trying to not do that anymore, though. I'm trying to focus. Um, it's hard when you're creative to want to focus on just one thing. It's hard for me. I'll put it that way. I see other artists that focus on, say, well, like watercolors. Like, there's a few people I follow on Instagram that I really absolutely love their work. And they are just fabulous artists. And they... You know their work when you see them. It's so distinctive to them and their style, their genre of painting or whatever you want to call it. And I want I, I want to be like that. I want people to see my work and say, oh, that's Floodlight's work, you know? <sighs> but, but I'm trying to hone in a little bit more and and rein it in a little bit more and, and and be more dedicated to maybe well I said well I go three mediums I'm working on three mediums mainly which if you knew me that is honing it in for me because <laughs> I'm I have been all over the place with my antique business and the, making things and for way too long. So. And I just recently started the pen and ink drawings when I started my sketchbook. I'm trying to think when I started my sketchbook. If it was before my surgery or after my surgery. I think it was mainly most of my work was after my surgery. I've got it dated in my book so I need to look back but I started doing the pen and ink mainly and I don't know why I started doing pen and ink that was just I think my son might have been inspired me to do the pen and ink because my son was doing a lot of charcoal and pen and ink drawings at the time and I think he may have been the one who sparked me to try my pen and ink again it had been years. Okay, there's the, there's that. And then I'm going to put a shadow under these little panels. this panel look like it's coming up off the background a little bit. And my light source is coming from this direction. So we've got shadow underneath and shadow on the right side of everything. That's where the majority of the shadows are going to go. This bottom and right. Man, my birds have not shut up the whole time I've been talking. They probably wish I would shut up. <laughs> they probably wish I would quit talking. I have two, and they say if you have one, they do better than two. And I really truly believe that because the one I had before that, that passed away, he would talk to me. Because uh, I was his mommy, I guess. And now the two that I have, they talk to each other. Or they just fuss when I'm here talking. But they don't associate with me very well. They're more to them, to each other. They're connected with each other, but not me. I've had them for a couple years. And then I had my other one. 
a couple of years. My other bird's name was Osha. And now I have Samson and Delilah are the birds that I have now. Okay, let's see. Under and to the right. So this is going to have a shadow. And on this little panel here, I want you to be able to see the dark shadow on the inside. So we're just going to This reminds me of a, a heating grate, a heating vent. We call them vents. What goes in your house? Your air comes through, your air and heat comes through. Okay, and then on here we have a shadow underneath this. trying to get all the black areas in with this bigger pen. All the major contrasty shadows and gotta get the shadows on the rivets. have a shadow on this panel My stomach is growling. I must be hungry. I ate though. I'm trying to watch what I eat. And not eat as much. And that's so hard. Where's sure when your stomach's growling? I'm just putting shadows under all of these rivets, going under the bottom half of them, because I want the rivets to look like they're standing up off of the metal plates on the bird's feathers. Oh, we have, I missed one right here. Now my original drawing, the plates are gold. But since we changed the idea on our other concepts for the other drawings, I'll have to 
contact the collector and ask him. I know you're, I know with some artists they and he'd really give me free liberty to do what I wanted on these projects. He just was like, I totally like the steampunk. Um, well, he'll use the word totally, but I'm paraphrasing. He's like, I really like the steampunk, and I would like for you to do four drawings, and you come up with whatever you think. But I'm a perfectionist, and I want my clients to be happy with my work. So I have a tendency to maybe overthink things. And so I texted him and said, hey, look, here are my rough sketches. What do you think? And, of course, that gives the client a little bit more freedom in saying this is what I really like and this is what I really want and um, I don't want an unhappy customer that's for sure I do not want an unhappy customer oh I see something I forgot forgot to put in this little I had a line going around here I'm just following the contour of this other circle I, I used a protractor to do the other circles before but I'm just right now I'm just going along the edge of this other one. And basically this cog wheel, I guess you call it, is acting as the eye because this cog wheel is off not in the center of this clock and that's intentional because it's this is acting as the eye here for this piece okay we're gonna put some shadows on these guys little drips and I still have to draw in all my background lines. I haven't got those in yet. In my last video we talked about shadows and how shadows play on surrounding objects or surfaces and the closer an object is to a surface the closer the shadow is going to be, but the further away that object is, the further away the shadow will be. And in this case, the shadow is running right along the edge of that piece. If you're watching this video and you don't live in the South, you live somewhere else in another state, um, name off, if you leave a comment, name off some of the art shops that you have, that you find your supplies from. We have a store by the name of Michael's where we get most of our art supplies, or where I get most of my art supplies, they're very reasonable. 
Now I got to. Where was we at? Me and my husband went somewhere, and I got to go to a place called Cheap Joe's. It was an art. It's an art store too, but I, I wasn't. Um, they had okay stuff. They didn't have as much there as I thought they would have. I'm actually trying to put a, a blanket over my birds and see if that would make them hush. I know I've heard other people do that. it's time to go to sleep at night. I don't have that problem with my birds because they stay in my studio all the time. So at night time they get quiet on their own because it gets dark in the studio. I'm not usually in. Now occasionally I'm in here late but most of the time I'm not. I usually work in the day in the studio. But I don't usually have that trouble. Maybe I could trick them into thinking that it's bedtime and that they need to be quiet. And they actually, they actually heard what I just said because they stopped chirping. Is that not funny? I threatened them, that's what it was. <laughs> They didn't knew they were both sleeping. They got their little heads tucked down in between their wings just to sleep. So I think I'm going to quit with this video because this has been an hour long. I can't believe it took me that long just to sketch that, to draw that in. But um, so far I have these two sketches for my client. This one's not finished yet. I'm waiting on a response because we originally were going to do the background in black. But because this one has the lines on it. I think I want to mimic the same thing on this one. So I'm waiting on the client's um, answer on that. But this is, I just started this one because I'm waiting on the answer on the other one. So I'm going to quit. And it was good to have you with me watching. And I hope that you come back and watch uh, part two of this. Hopefully we can finish up on part two with with this piece. This piece was one of the simpler ones. So um, thanks for watching again and check back with me to see part two of my steampunk bird. Thanks again and if you like my work comment good comments. Don't want any negative. I know I'll probably end up getting some but I would love good comments because that encourages and not discourages. But thanks again. We'll talk to you later. Bye.